Hi, I'm Bob Warfield, and in this video, I want to take you through five key concepts for feeds and speeds. Oh man, I can already see the reactions out there. Key concepts, jargon, ah, we don't want to deal with that. Look, here's the thing. It's not that hard. Just five key concepts, and you'll see how easy it is, and you've got this you will have a far better understanding of why feeds and speeds behave the way they do. So let's jump in and get it figured out. Key concept number one, there are feeds and speeds sweet spots. And depending upon the material, the sweet spots may be large for easy to machine materials like wood, or the sweet spot could be really small for really challenging materials, titanium, inconel, things like this. And the sweet spot is really just, just a mixture of two variables. That would be your spindle RPM and your feed rate, right? So you get the spindle up to a certain number of RPMs and you're gonna move the cutter through the material at a particular feed, typically inches per minute or or millimeters per minute in metric, okay? So this diagram shows you what happens when you go too fast or too slow in either feed rate or spindle RPM. It's pretty useful to have a little bit of intuition about how this stuff works. So you have some idea what would happen if you increased or decreased either your RPMs or your feed rate. So for example, here's something that's really counterintuitive, and that is that if you go too slow on the feed rate, that can be really bad. And we're gonna talk more about why, but basically what happens is at some point, you're going so slow that your tool starts to rub instead of cutting. Um, really, you wanna shoot for these green areas in the sweet spot. Uh, so if you're a beginner, it's fine to just kinda hit a happy medium, and that's right here. Okay, it's not the fastest you can go in terms of material removal rates. It's not the absolute best surface finish you can get. But on the other hand, you're going to get great tool life and everything else is going to be pretty good as well. Um, if you're a pro on the other hand and you are trying to max out your performance, right, you want to get uh, a, the fastest feed rate you can get away with at the highest spindle RPM you can get away with. And that's going to be your goal for roughing material because that's your maximum material removal rate. That's where you're going to be hogging out the most chips in a hurry. In terms of a finish pass, uh, where you want to minimize the amount of work you have to do after you take the part off the machine, you're going to stay at a very similar spindle RPM and you're just going to slow down the feed rate a bit to get to a better surface finish. And that is really pretty much what you need to know about sweet spots, you know? Print out the diagram, stick it up on the wall, uh, think about it every now and again. It's, e it's always easier to remember things visually, I find. Okay, let's talk about key concept number two. When we talk about speeds and feeds, the speeds part of that is your spindle RPM. And the key measurement for uh, speeds isn't really RPMs. I mean, that's ultimately what you want to get to. It's surface speed. When we're talking about a cutter's surface speed that it can go, what we're trying to do is trying to make sure we don't go too fast because too much speed, too many RPMs, heats up the tool. And when it gets hot, the tool is going to soften and dull and pretty soon it's going to break. Okay? So what surface speed is, is it's a diameter independent way to specify your speed. And that's valuable because you only need one surface speed for a particular family of, uh, let's say, end mills and every size you want to run at that surface speed. OK, and so the way to think about that is if the cutter is moving across the workpiece and I like to think of a pizza cutter because it's easy to envision no matter what this diameter is. If you push it at the same speed, uh, it's going to cut that pizza at the same rate. Okay, so that's really what surface speed is all about. Think about a pizza cutter. The units of surface speed are surface feet per minute, SFM, or 
meters per minute in metric. Okay? Concept number three is all about the feeds part of speeds and feeds. And when we're talking about feeds, we want to set the feed rate on the cut. And the important measurement there, just as it wasn't uh, RPMs for speeds, it was surface speed. For feed rate, uh, it's going to be what's called the chip load. Okay? And if you think of this S-shape as your end mill viewed uh, from, from the top as it's cutting into this little slot, you can see it's slicing off a chip here. And that distance is the chip load. Okay? Um, <clears throat> chip load is independent of how many flutes you have on the cutter. And so just as surface speed's independent of RPM, we like chip load because it's independent of the number of flutes. Now here's the thing. If we slice off too thick of a chip, the chips are going to jam the cutter in the hole and eventually it's going to snap off, okay? So you don't want to get too much of a chip load. If you're cutting too thin of a chip, the cutter rubs, and that's bad for tool life. We talked about that before. I'm going to show you exactly what rubbing is here in a sec. But it's very important to have your chip load in the sweet spot for your cutter. Another thing to keep in mind is you only want to use two or three flutes in aluminum. And the reason is the chip load is so high on aluminum and that you get these great big chips and they curl. And so it's, it's too easy to jam a four flute cutter or, or let alone a five or six, seven flute cutter. You want two or three flutes in aluminum. The units of chip load are inch per tooth, right? That's how thick that chip is. Uh, or sometimes you'll see inch per revolution, IPT. Uh, that's for all teeth. And then you got the millimeter equivalents of those in metric. Okay, so that's feed rate. Okay, let's talk about this whole rubbing thing. Going too slow on feed rate is just as bad as going too fast. And here's what's happening. The red is your material and the blue is your cutter and it's trying to slice off a chip. Now, if you use enough magnification, what looks like a knife-sharp edge is actually rounded at high magnification. And so rubbing is really simple. As we take a thinner and thinner chip, here we are zoomed in on that round edge, and pretty soon you get to where, instead of the edge getting up under the chip so you can slice it off, well, the edge starts to get above the chip. And then the thing just plows along trying to scrape up chips. That is very high friction, as you could imagine. It generates a lot of heat, and again, you're going to wind up softening the edge. You're going to get tool damage. Just not a good thing if you go too slow. you got to keep the speed up to where you're slicing off nice, clean chips, and that cutter can get up under the material enough to slice those chips. By the way, micro mills. Any cutter less than an eighth of an inch in diameter is basically a micro mill, and you can get really tiny cutters. As you can imagine, such cutters have to slice thinner and thinner chips, and they are much more likely to rub. So it's really important to be sensitive to this whole rubbing thing if you want to be able to properly cut with micro mills. By the way, our G-Wizard calculator has a rubbing warning. It will automatically avoid rubbing for you and tell you if you force it into a situation where it has to rub, that you're going to have rubbing problems, and so you probably shouldn't do that. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, let's talk about chip thinning. Chip thinning is another one of those counterintuitive things where you go, hey, I'm going to get real conservative on this cut, and that'll be really easy on my tooling. I'm going to cut, you know, a really, really shallow cut at a really slow feed rate. Oh, man, that is a recipe for rubbing and it's because of chip thinning look at this diagram over here as looking down from above at your end mill and these lines are different cutting depths and what you can see here in the colors is what the chip looks like and at the same chip load okay a shallow cut is much thinner than if you're at half the cutter diameter or larger so anytime you go below half the cutter's diameter with your cut width, you're going to get chip thinning. 
And what that means is your chips are going to be thinner than you think if you're using the basic formulas to calculate your feeds and speeds. Now, G-Wizard is going to automatically accelerate the feed rate to maintain a constant uh, chip load. It's going to give you your expected chip thickness, no matter how, how thin of a cut width you set up. And so that's, that's pretty cool that you don't have to worry about chip thinning with G-Wizard. Now, another thing to keep in mind, this is a geometric effect that has to do with this round spinning tool cutting. And we're looking at a tool from above, but you can imagine a ball-nosed end mill, right? If this was from the side, it can have chip thinning too, if you're making shallow cuts. And so there's, or, or let's say you have a round insert cutter, and that's an insert viewed from the side. So more than one kind of chip thinning adjustment needs to be made. And again, G-Wizard will automatically do the right thing for you on that to avoid any problems with chip thinning. Okay? Hey, you made it. You're more an expert than you were when we started, and it wasn't so bad, right? You've now got some good visual intuitive ideas about how to think about these different five concepts in your feeds and speeds. And that means fewer surprises for you and better results. Thanks very much. I'll be back at you with another video soon.